Well, this is a special video. You actually get three learning targets for the price of one. 44 through 46 are all on the, uh, the same basic topic, so we put them together. And we're playing with a new uh, drawing software, so it should help to, to visualize some of these concepts. Uh, I also feel like these are a little bit out of order. I think 45 is probably uh, a good place to start for us. Then we'll come back and do 44, and then move on to 46. So 45 is talking about, uh, all these ones are talking about circular motion. It's an object just moving around and around and around in a perfect circle. And for right now, we're going to assume that the speed of, of around that circle stays constant. So it's just a change in direction as it goes around, as it accelerates. So let's take a look at 44 first, the direction of a particle's velocity and acceleration at any time during the motion. So we've got circular motion shown. Um, and we'll assume that this is for an object that's going around clockwise. And so the velocity at any moment in time uh, for this, uh, this object moving is going to be what we call tangent to the circle, or it's tangential velocity. So here at some moment, uh, moment one, if it's moving around in this direction in the circle, then that velocity is going to be pointing downward when it's over here. It's tangent to the circle, or it'd be at a right angle to some radius that we draw in here, and at a right angle to a radius that we draw in there. And uh, so as, as our object changes direction, it goes around the circle, we would find that our velocity vector is just going to stay tangent to that circle all the way around. All right. Now, the acceleration is going to be a little tricky here. So far, we've, we've mainly been looking at changes in speed for acceleration. But remember, the, the definition for acceleration includes both parts of velocity, so that's speed and the direction. So even if speed isn't changing here, the object is accelerating because it's changing direction. Now, in general, we can say that the acceleration of an object, and that's a vector, is equal to the change in velocity for that object divided by the amount of time it takes to change. And I guess we typically don't write the delta in there. It's kind of an implied delta, though. It is the change in time, not oh, it changed time or change velocity at three o'clock. It's how much time it takes to change. So for vectors uh, or for anything, delta means the final minus the initial value. So here. Uh, let's look at v2 and v1. So this will be v2 vector minus v1 as a vector divided by the time it takes to change. So let's visualize this. If we did v2 this direction plus v1, we'd have a vector v2 uh, kind of coming down like this and then v1 added on top of that. But we're not adding v1, we're subtracting v1. So instead of having that uh, go downward like this, we're going to have it in the opposite direction. V1 is going to be up like this. So that's V2, and this is a negative V1 vectors. Now our uh, acceleration vector is going to be uh, pointing in this direction. Or, sorry, our, our change in velocity. Change in velocity vector points out, kind of up and, and to the left there. Uh, then we uh, we would divide that by time, which is a scalar quantity, uh, and so that's not going to change the direction. Now this is the average change, or sorry, that'd be the average velocity uh, for this time period. So let's just kind of put that right in the middle. So it goes from here, kind of up and to the left, and that is our acceleration vector. And so it points toward the middle, and it looks like uh, you know if, if we continue to do this for any point in time, we'd get kind of the same thing all the way around. So 
So all these acceleration vectors, they're pointing toward this middle spot here. So acceleration pointing toward the middle, that's what we call center seeking acceleration or center desiring acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is the word we usually use for this. Centripetal just meaning center, centra. And pedal, just like the pedal of a flower, means desire. Now let's look at some amounts for these. So how the radius of a circle um, relates to the, uh, the amount of acceleration. So we'll have, uh, sorry, not just radius, but also speed. Um, we'll have the, uh, um, some measurements here for circular motion. Um, and again, we'll have acceleration pointing to the middle. And since it's centripetal acceleration, we usually write that as AC. And then we're going to have some linear velocity, V. And that speed will uh, remain constant, just the direction changes. And so it turns out here that um, how much we accelerate, how quickly that velocity vector changes, depends on how quickly our object is going around in this circle and how big the circle is. So for a tighter circle, we have to change velocity more rapidly. And if we're going faster, we have to change our, our velocity, change our direction more rapidly as well. So it turns out on this that the magnitude of that centripetal acceleration is going to be equal to the linear velocity squared divided by the radius. So as we get faster, our acceleration has to get larger. We change direction faster. As our radius gets smaller or we get to a tighter turn, we'd have to have a larger acceleration or a more rapid change in direction. And the last one, looking at uh, the components in the x or the y direction for those uh, um, those acceleration vectors um, and for the velocity vectors for this uh, uh, this circular motion. So let's look at just these seven moments in time. This and uh, for each one of these moments, we'll just draw in a quick vector to show um, the velocity and another one for acceleration. So I'll do velocity in blue. Again, that's going to be tangent to the circle, and we'll just assume that this thing's going around clockwise again. So I'll have velocity down this way, and then down this way, and then over to the left, and then up and to the, uh, up and to the left, and straight up, and then up and to the right, just to the right, and then down to the right. Okay, and then acceleration. That'll be an orange. And that's always going to be toward the center of the circle. Center seeking, center desiring, centripetal acceleration. Always pointing toward the center. And I'm not being very consistent on the length, but I ought to be since we have uh, this assumption we're making right now that it's traveling at a, a constant speed. So acceleration should be the same all the way around. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, acceleration and at our velocity. Um, we'll do this in the x direction and in the y direction. And let's label these a little more generally. So this will be x, and then we're going to do acceleration in the x in orange, and velocity in the x in blue. So velocity in the x direction, let's start with that one. Uh, we start with zero velocity in the x direction for time zero. It's just moving straight down. And then at, uh, at time one, we have a component going to the left. And we'll say to the left is negative. So I'll put a negative velocity here. At time two, it's even more of that is to the left. The entire velocity is to the left. So we'll add a negative velocity there. Um, and it's a little larger magnitude. For time three, still going to the left, but not as much. Time four, it's going straight up, so no x velocity at, at all there. Time five, it's going to the right and up, so part of its velocity is to the, uh, uh, to the right, positive. Time six, we have a maximum value for velocity going to the left. 
uh, sorry, to the right, uh, and then times 7, we have just part of that velocity going to the right again. So we get kind of this, well, this shape look, should look pretty familiar. We have a, a sine curve. And that will repeat as this thing goes around. And in the x direction for acceleration now, at time zero, we have a maximum um, negative acceleration. It's pointing straight to the left there. So I'll put this here, and the magnitude doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the velocity. It you know, probably won't be. Uh, for time two, time one, we've got you know, still to the left, but also upward. So we've lost a little bit of our uh, velocity in the x direction. Time two, no or sorry, no acceleration in the x direction at all. Straight up. Time three, it's pointing a little bit to the right. Uh, maybe a little bit more to the right. Time four, it's going as far to the right as it can. Time five, it's going to the right still, but also downwards, so we've lost a little bit of that acceleration to the right. Time six, it's pointing straight downwards, so no x component at all. And time seven, got a little bit of a negative, but you know, not at maximum value, so we have another sine curve, or you might think of this one as a cosine curve, since it starts with a non-zero value, but you know, really it's the same shape, so we can um, think of it either way here. And these would uh, would continue if we extended this, uh, this graph, these would continue to do kind of the same thing. So uh, what we can see is that these are offset from each other by um, well, by a quarter of a cycle, by 90 degrees, or by pi over 2 radians. Now if we do the same thing, but for the y direction, y direction, so we'll have uh, an orange acceleration in the y, and in blue velocity in the y. Um, we're going to have you know, a very similar picture here, um, just kind of offset again from what it was before. So at time of zero in the y direction, velocity is as negative as it's going to get. Time of one, velocity is a little negative. Time two, velocity in the y is zero. Time three, it's a little bit positive. Time uh, maybe a little more positive than that. Get rid of that one, there we go. Time four, it's at a maximum positive value. Time five, it's still a little positive, but not as much. Time six, zero. And time seven, a little bit negative. So we get our sine curve filled in there. And then back to orange. At a time of zero, we have no velocity in the y, or no acceleration in the y direction. It's all in the x. We get a little positive value at time one. We get a maximum positive value at time two. Smaller positive value at time three. Zero at time four. Little negative value at time five. Maximum negative value at time six. And a little negative value at time seven. So we'll fill in our curve here. Okay, and again, another sine curve. So these uh, velocity and acceleration magnitudes for the x and for the y direction, they're always going to be uh, sine curves in shape. And all we really have to do is figure out uh, you know, where they start, where along the curve they start.